Welcome back to Rockstar Brewer. Um, I'm here today at Bob's Beer uh, in beautiful Surface Paradise on the Gold Coast in Queensland. Uh, and uh, this is part two of our how to brew amazing lager with sound water chemistry, I think it was. So uh, if you're watching this and you haven't seen part one, then uh, I'm gonna leave a link up there or up there or something like that and uh, you'll be able to jump straight to that, back to that one. Um, so with me today, again, I've got Ryan Fullerton from Bob's Beer. Uh, how you doing, mate? Yeah, good, man. Good, good to see you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Well, bloody well that lager turned out pretty well, didn't it? What's the actual release yeah. name? Uh, the release name is... Uh, Elkhorn Lager. Elkhorn Lager, okay. Yeah. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cover basically what we talked about last year and how the evolution of this beer and how it turned into a, from a pilot brew uh, into something that's on tap at this beautiful brew pub. Uh, so um, when we spoke last year, you had done a pilot batch and you were having some issues done, with it. Do you recall what those issues were? I'd done quite a few pilot batches and the issue was it just wasn't, it was just flabby. Um, it just, yeah, it was like the, there was no definition to it. It was just kind of a bit thin and, and none of the, like, there wasn't a lot of malt character, yep. but the hops weren't coming through either. Yep, and yep. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just sort of a, right. a beer that, um, you know, it was just bland and flabby and um, uh, it just didn't really pop in your opinion, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and so we talked a little bit about... Um, things like addressing issues around work pH and making that land at the right place and a little yeah. bit of water chemistry and, uh, and that sort of thing. So what changed with this beer? Um, well, I mean, as you can see by having a taste of it, it's um, like, yeah, it's actually got malt character to it now. Um, there still isn't a lot of hop to it, but that's, I mean. It's, it's a little bit there. Yeah, it's, it's just, a, that, just a back note, but yeah. it's, it actually has flavor now. It's, it's something I want to drink as yep. opposed to the, yeah, the pilot batches, which were sitting in my kegerator for months and just sort of going, oh, I might just throw it out. So. <laughs> and so how did you address those flavour issues to make the pop? Um, like, it, it really was just a uh, water chemistry issue. Um, so, yeah, the pH was too high and um, ended up using just a, a tiny little bit of magnesium as well. Okay. Um, which, yeah, it's... I don't... I don't I'm don't. i guessing the uh, pH helped more than anything else, but sure. the... Yeah, the magnesium seems to have just um, brightened up the malt as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. why, but uh, there's a, there's a couple of there's a couple of bit, the different things that magnesium you know sort of plays in terms of beer flavour and that sort of thing. Yeah, cool. But more so in hoppy beers though, you know, I think a little bit of magnesium is good if you're going to uh, have like a fruity hoppy beer. You know, a few ppm can help you sort of pop those yeah, fruity okay. flavours, but. It's also, magnesium is also really good for yeast health as well. So, yeah, I love, um, that makes sense. I'm, I'm fermenting that fairly cool, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, what's the water like here? Did you get your water tested? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty flat, honestly. Like, it's um, it, it seems to be coming from desal, so there's not a lot left in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm having, it's it's not quite, you know, it's not RO water, yep. obviously, but yeah, like, I'm, I'm having to add quite a lot of everything really to to actually get it yeah because um, last year when we spoke we we looked at a a water report from a brewery not far from here yeah uh, and the gold coast is pretty interesting because um in southeast queensland we have the southeast queensland water network and there's a desalination plant down on the border not too far from here on the gold coast uh and the water network covers right from the border a couple of hundred k's all the way up yeah. to noosa and so your water supply can vary frequently, yeah. you know, yeah. based on what dams are running dry and how fast the desal is running and all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So typically what I found of the water here uh, on the Gulf Coast uh, is pretty soft, you know, there's only usually around sort of 30 ppm of calcium, not very much magnesium. This yep. is very different to Brisbane, where yep. there's more, way more magnesium. It's about 15 ppm of magnesium. It's yeah, crazy. Okay. Um, and the alkalinity of the water here is much lower, and that's because of the desal plant yeah. sort of kicking in, you know? Um, oh, makes sense. And so when it comes to, what's your brew length here? Uh, 1,200 litres. 1,200 litres. Yeah. 
So when it comes to, so, what, so let's just talk about what's in this beer. So just give us an idea of what the malt is, um, what you've hopped it with, and then we'll talk a little about the, about the water and getting that to yeah, all cool. match up. Um, so the, the malt, there's, there's three malts. Um, it's uh, Vienna, Munich, so primarily Vienna, like 90%. So Vienna's your base malt? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, okay. hence, hence the colour. Yep. Um, and then a little bit of Munich and uh, sprinkling of um, carapels. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and then bittered with magnum and then late kettle hop of uh, Halatau. Really? Yeah. This is very different to the beer that you had last year. Yes, yes. Because last year we were talking about like a... It was going to be a Gladfield, Mexican lager. Yeah. There was some Munich. There was some Gladiator, which is like a Carapils. Yeah. And then you had Citra in it. Yeah, uh, lemon drop. Lemon drop, was yeah. it? Yeah, so, okay. um, we, we also ended up with a different chef. Yep. Um, which means the food was different. Right, okay. And, uh, oh, yeah, it was going to be a sort of Mexican style lager. Yep. Um, because we were going to be doing Mexican style food. Sure. Which is no longer the case. Okay. So I went, well, <laughs> that beer goes down the drain and yep. I'll come up change with something it. new. Yeah, come up with something else. So and what? we've ended up with a kind of Hellasy style thing. Um, it's a little bit darker than most people expect, sure. but it's still within spec, so, yep, yep. and I reckon it tastes great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so in a 1200 litre batch, it's about 10 barrels, what, what do you, um, how do you treat your water here? What sort of, what sort of salt addition um, acid are you putting in? Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what's in this one, but I mean, we're size. adding, um, yeah, th this one's getting uh, calcium sulfates, a little bit of either carbonate or chloride, probably chloride, yep. um, a little bit of magnesium, and then um, a surprisingly large amount of um, lactic acid to get it to- To get the pH to down. To get the pH down to where it yep. should be, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a really interesting one when you wind up in that situation where um, uh, you're having to drop, drop the pH, you're battling the water alkalinity. Yeah, and, yeah. And trying to get it down, and, and, and sometimes it can come across pretty pretty frightening you're going oh man is this going to be going to wind up a salvia i'm adding a lot of that yeah, lactic acid here. But, i mean we've, we've got a decent ph meter and you know as, as i'm sure most people watching this will have seen in, in various facebook groups calibrated asap every day, every day. yeah yeah, that's, so, my, yeah. that's my mantra is calibrate your ph meter every day it's, yeah it's the yeah. most I, I i have real trust issues with ph meters in general that's yeah. why i'll spend a lot of money on one um, yeah. So, and, yeah, and we've, we've got a fairly decent one out there as well and um, yeah like I'm just sort of you know you're sitting there chucking in half a litre of lactic acid and going no it's alright it's fine yeah, that's where it's it should be out, so. it's come out nice and crisp so so in terms of mash pH where did you roughly aim uh, 5.2 5.2 yeah okay right so and do you find when you run off to the kettle that the work pH comes up a little bit or yeah it, it does because right I'm, I'm not modifying my sparge water anyway yep um, so the sparge water is 6.2 seven or something ridiculous yep, yep. like that it's just what it normally um, is yep. so and then you know the hopping will bring it down a little bit um but yeah i'm, I'm generally getting about 5.4 5.6 in the kettle in the kettle that's good do you um, know why that's a good thing is because if you want to battle dms yep right you're not going to probably get it so much because you're using the malt as your base malt yep but if you're using like a pilsner malt um what helps more than a long boil to sort of combat DMS yep. is a higher boil pH. Okay. So right. if you get your boil pH up around the 5.4 mark yeah. right, in the kettle, um, that's faster at dealing with DMS oh, than boiling for a long time. Yeah, cool. Right. Um, the downside to that, well, maybe it might be a downside, is that the higher your boil pH, the more colour is going to be imparted from the Maillard reaction. Yeah, okay. Right. And so you kind of got to kind of balance that. If you want a pale beer, Maybe you might need to boil a little longer and have your pH just a little smidge yeah, lower, yeah. or if you wanna, or if you don't care about the colour, even in a beer like this, just yeah. send it. You know? Yeah, that's so, it. And then so when you get to the end of the boil, you're having to do any, um, you, you're having to add more acid to get the work pH no. where you want it to be. So you're no, starting actually, at five point. Yeah, um, I'm I'm fermenting it on W thirty four seventy. Okay. At a fairly low temperature for quite a long time, and the the this batch. The, the final pH was um, 4.1. Wow, spot on. Yeah, and the batch that I've got in the tank at the moment is currently like 4.16. Yep. 
and it's still got a few days to go. So yep. I have no concerns if it's going to get there. Yeah, no, that's a bloody spot on pH for a stop here. Yeah. Like this, it's nice, it's beautiful, it's crisp. And, yeah. Uh, I would drink pints and pints of this if yeah. I didn't have a um, drive home today. You are, <laughs> you are not the only one. It's yeah. our best selling beer by a long shot. Yeah, so. right. That's amazing. Um, and so when you went from, um, when, we was, when we spoke last year, um, we, we spoke about how you sort of put together water chemistry and that sort of thing depending upon the beer that you're trying trying to brew and you're using beer smith to sort yes. of do your salts and acids and all that sort of stuff has that yeah. changed uh, no has no it changed? i'm still using beer still smith. Beer yeah smith. right um mostly because i use beer smith as quite as embarrassing as it is i use beer smith to get the initial thing yep uh, like the initial water profile yep. and then i because I've been using Beersmith for so long, I know I just need to add a bit more of this or a bit less of that to get kind of it right. get where you want it to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, like I'm, I'm sure I could be more accurate about it, but um, honestly, if, if it's getting the job done, um, I'm happy to just roll with it. Beersmith is just such a great tool for um, professional brewers as, it, as much as it is for home brewers yeah um, because I find it so comprehensive in, in sort of you know gravity prediction color yeah. prediction goodness prediction yeah all the things that really count um, it's really good I personally don't use beer smith for uh, water as yeah. you know it, um, it is a bit janky but for that obviously uh, but that, and that's, that doesn't take away from the whole experience of using beer smith at yeah. all I just use I use a different tool I use brewing water to all my water calculations yeah every brewer is different that's totally okay, um, and um, uh, whatever works for you. You know, if you're yeah. getting good flavour outcomes and you're happy with it, and I'd be bloody happy with this beer. Great, Beersmith's doing a good job for you, man. Yeah. So that's really good. And so basically, uh, so Beersmith has a way, if I remember correctly, of sort of predict. Well, if you sort of tell it where your water currently is and where you want it to be, it'll actually. It's got this automated thing that'll actually do yeah. that. Do you use that, or you just um, do it manual? I that's where I start um, so like I'll, I'll sort of I'll put in my water profile that I, that I get when it's tested mm-hmm. and say I want this and that'll spit out a ballpark thing and then I change it myself from there um, just so I'm not having to rely on I'm, I'm not great with maths yep um, so it does it I'm does not the, having does to the, rely on, does on myself work. to yeah, to, to go through that and, you know, accidentally add a zero and suddenly I'm putting two <laughs> kilos of sulfate into it, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's um, so I, I kind of modify from there and just sort of go for a generally amber balanced, I think, or, or yellow balanced. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll modify it myself. Yeah, um, okay. just yeah, that makes sense. By feel, I guess. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, some things are about gut feel. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the, you know, like... If you, even if you use something like brewing water or beer smith or something like that, I find that a computer can only get you so far and it takes a human being to do that last 20% to yeah. really sort of dial that in as to where you want it yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, no computer can replace your experience, you know, yeah, your palate and all that sort of thing. So uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. One of the other things we spoke about as well, not necessarily related to water chemistry, was we were talking about using tetrahop in part. Yes. Uh, did that end up coming into play at all? No, it didn't. Um, mostly because I couldn't find anyone willing to sell tiny amounts of it for pilot batches, and I uh, didn't really want to be buying big one kilo jars of this stuff. Yeah, for sure. When we didn't, at that point, we didn't know when we were opening. Yep. Um, yep. So like, you know, even the construction crews were stopped by yep, COVID. Yep. yep. Um, so I was sort of going, well, if I, if I buy this one kilo of Tetra Hop and then use two grams of it or five grams in the in the beer, is are we still going to have the remainder yep. when we're open? So I just kind of went, I'll just, I'll do without. Um, I'm having a chuckle because yeah. I'm a dickhead who went and bought a kilo of Tetra Hop <laughs> in the brewery at home, in my oh, home lovely. brewery at home. So yeah. it's been sitting there and I've half used it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But there you go. So, yeah. uh, so that's pretty good. Mean, so, most of what I brew at home is sort of Belgians anyway. So yep. I'm, yeah, I'm not concerned about head retention. I am a bit about this one. That's fixed. But right. um, for yeah. how many batches of this you brewed on this system here? Uh, this is the this is the first the batch. Very we're first. Drinking. Yeah. So look, you yeah. know, it's, it, it takes twelve months to dial in a brand new brewery yeah. when you build it, and so it's very very rare that your beer is going to come out one hundred percent perfect on the very first brew. But I have to say, I have to commend you, mate. First batch. 
of beer. That's yes. amazing. Yeah. And I really look forward to this beer's journey. Cheers. Uh, as you go and that sort of thing, because uh, that means we're going to have to come and stay down here and drink <laughs> a few beers and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm, um, I'm actually really happy with how the brew houses have performed in general. Like we haven't needed to throw anything out yet. Um, yet. Um, no, I was expecting to probably dump the first two or three batches because yep. they'd just be too far out of spec, and it just hasn't happened. Um, yeah, yeah. It was like just hit the ground running. So yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. You're in my Facebook group, aren't you? I the am. Quality Focus Pro Brewers. Yeah. 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 So um, if you're a professional <coughs> brewer and you want to uh, get a little bit more extra content that I don't necessarily post on YouTube. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below and uh, come and join us over at Quality Focus Pro Brewers. Uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. It'd be great to see you. Uh, it's a good it's a good place for pro brewers. Uh, just make sure you answer the uh, uh, questions that you get asked when you go and join. Otherwise, I don't approve you because we try and keep, no disrespect to home brewers, but we try and keep it strictly professional over there. I think it's doing a pretty good job so far, isn't it? Yeah. And um, great place to uh, be. It's a good place to be. So come and join us. Leave a link in the description below. Uh, right. Thanks heaps, mate. This no beer is looking amazing uh, and Cheers. tasting amazing. Uh, and I really look forward to where this is going to go in the future. No filter here, and the beers come up super bright. Yeah. So you've got to be super happy with that. I'm absolutely stoked. I yeah. mean, that's another water chemistry consideration. Obviously, you've got that right that just all the yeast just drops out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a bit of biofine helps as well. Of course, so. absolutely. And it's all. just a shitload of tank time. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. These these beers take time, and yeah. they're, they're you know they're they're worth the wait. I think. Yeah, that's so, it. Um, so they're all good. This Ryan. Thanks heaps, mate. Cheers. Great to great to have you on today. And um, if you want to know uh, more about what uh, uh, what we do at Rockstar Brewer, head on over to the Quality Focus Pro Brewers uh, Facebook group. Uh, come and join the discussion, uh, and uh, we'll see you over there. So thanks very much for watching. Leave a like if you like this video, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Cheers, Cheers man. man.